demanding our nation back in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare Corona will not colonize us in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, Jehovah our Lord is able to guide our nation, is able to deliver us. Our nation belongs to God because the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose Lord God is their God, Lord Almighty God. The Bible says, Righteousness exhausts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any nation. We declare Kenya, Kenya will not be taken hostage, Kenya will not be taken siege. In the name of the Lord, in the everybody pray, everybody pray. Ujabu mpenzi mtazamaji na karibu katika kipindi shetu cha neno la neema. Kwa majina yangu ni mshungaji Michael Wanderi kutoka kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship hapa mjini Kiambu. Ninakuletea hili neno wakati ambao kuna uzito mwingi sana katika taifa letu na pia katika dunia mzima. Lakini na kueleza hivi kwa sababu mungu waliweka katika moyo wangu kupitia kwa loho wake mtakatifu Ya kwamba kipindi hiki ambacho kimejaa giza ni kulete neno la tumaini Na ni kueleza ya kwamba kama vile mungu alivyo nena na musa Alinena na musa ya kwamba niko tayari kuingiza hawa wana wa israeli katika nchi nilio wapia nchi ya kanan Na akasema ya kwamba ni nchi ambayo jisho langu hutazama kuanzia mwanzo wa mwaka hadi mwisho wa mwaka. Niko hapa kukutangazia ya kwamba jisho la mungu linatutazama kutoka januari na hata mpaka disemba. Na ninasema hivi yule mungu aliyefanya tukaweze kuona januari die atakaye fanya tuweze kuona that first december. Kwa sababu yeye yuko pamoja nasi. Kuna uwezekano kuwe na mafuliko, kuna uwezekano kuwe na magonjwa, kuna uwezekano kuwe na giza ya kila aina. Lakini ningetaka ni kuletea hili neno. Kwa sababu hili neno linatupatia tumaini. Kubuka ya kwamba neno la mungu likiingia dani mwetu, linatupatia nulu ya kufanya progress katika maeneo yetu yote. Hivi tu kumejaa giza, tumaini ya mungu. Hivi tu kumejaa mambo mazito ya magonjwa, tumaini mainia Mungu kwa sababu ni yeye yuko na neno letu la mwisho na kwa hivyo hili neno ninakuletea litakujaza tumaini lakini mwanzo ningetaka nikuletea hili neno ambalo litafungua akili yako kidogo kwa sababu shetani huwa anatumia silaha moja kuhakikisha ya kwamba kila mlango wa maisha yetu umefungwa na milango huwa inafunguka hata wakati wa giza Mungu huwa anatufungulia milango hata wakati uh, hakuna mvua si unakumbuka kuna mtu katika kitabu cha Genesis chapter 26 ambaye Mungu alimwambia huyu ni Isaka Mungu akamwambia watu wote wako hapa na wanaenda kule e, e, Misri kutafuta shakula Alisema watu wote wanaenda misri kutafuta shakula. Lakini wewe mtumishi wangu usiende kule. Wewe panda begu wakati huu ambao kumekauka na wakati huu ambao kuko na kiangazi. Na mungu wakambaliki. It was an open door. So God can open a door wakati wa giza na wakati ambao hakuna giza. Kwa hivyo ujue ya kwamba sisi diyo tunakuwa limited na majira. Lakini mungu wetu ye hapingui na majira yoyote. Remember Biblia inasema ya kwamba He is the same yesterday, today and forever more Kubuka pia neno la buwana inasema kwenye kile kitabu cha Danieli uh, Ya kwamba he is our God who changes times and seasons Lakini ye habadirishwi na nyakati na majira Ye hubadilisha nyakati na majira Tunaweza tukawa kwa majira mazito sana Lakini mungu akatubadilishia akatufungulia mlango mpya Tunaweza tukawa na nyakati ambazo ni zagiza Mungu atakufungulia mlango Atatupatia uwazi na nuru na mlango wa kutokea Na kwa hivyo nimekuletea hiri neno Hiri ukainue tumaini yako Kuna silaha moja ambao shetani huwa natu, anatumia. Ni kufunga watu macho, watu wakaweza kudharao, watu wale wengine. Na pia kudharao, irejia mungu wamewashagulia. Vitu nyingi mungu walizo zichagua. Kuleta uhai na tumaini, watu wengi walizalao. Na ninaweza nikaanzia na vile wanu wa israeli kwa miaka nyingi wamekaa jangwani wakiwa hawana shakula. Na wakati walipo mulilia Musa, Musa akamulilia mungu akiwa binguni Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba mungu akamuabia ya kwamba enenda uambie wana wa israeli Katika ile jangwa nitawapa, nitawapa mkate, kesho asubuhi kutakuwa na mkate 
uambie ya kwamba wanapata tu nafasi ya kushukua ule mkate wanautayalisha wanakula ule mkate maana umetengenezewa binguni alafu uambie uh, washukue ya kila siku wasiweke akiba ama ya, ya siku ya pili na neno la Bwana linasema ya kwamba the following day ale in the morning mikate ilikuweko kule nilikuwa ni jangwani lakini Mungu amefugua mlango kwenye jangwa Remember the Bible says that the Lord Almighty God is powerful he maketh the ways where seems to be no way anatengeneza jia in fact Biblia inasema anatupatia chemi shemi ya maji uh, uh, katika jangwa na anasema tazameni ninafanya jabu jipya hili ndilo jabu jipya nitakalo lifanya na Biblia inasema ya kwamba early in the morning early in the morning the following day wakaonyeshwa ya kwamba mikate ilikuwa imejaa lakini wakati walipoiona wale ambao walikuwa ni wanaume na wale ambao walikuwa ni wamama waliidharau because the bible says the size ya ule mkate ilikuwa kidogo the size was very small na kwa hivyo waliidharau na wakaulizana what is this and actually the meaning of the word manna is what is this that is, that is the meaning of the of the of the name manna inamaanisha hii ni kitu gani Waliona hii wakaona ni madharau maana walifikiria mkata ikitengenezwa ikitengenezwa biguni ina, inapaswa iwe kubwa kuliko hii mabasi tunaonaka kwa barabara iaguke ikiwa kama basi ili wakatakatakatane lakini wa Mungu aliahikisha ali ile mkata ilikuwa very small very small na ilikuwa alafu ilikuwa ni allowed kalikuwa kadogo sana wanaume wakati walina hii ni kitu gani hii hii mimi nitakula gapi kitabu ni shibe nitakula gapi hizi Wamama wana hii tutaokota tutakula gapi ka kitabu tushimbe wakaidharau walidharau mkate ya biguni mkate ambao ulitengenezwa biguni walidharau na naliposa naliposa ilikuwa ni wakati ambao ni mzito sana and even today god is opening doors wakati mwingine Mungu anafugua mulago lakini ule mulago vile unaonekana inaonekana mtu anaudharau kwa sababu ni mulago mdogo sana doesn't the bible say that we should not despise the days of our small beginnings ya kwamba tusije tukadharao mianzo yetu midogo maana ukidharau huo mlango wa mwanzo wako mdogo Mungu hata kuinua ningetaka niseme ni silaha ya shetani na imefchika watu wengi ninakumbuka kwenye kile kitabu cha ayubu ayubu anasema ili neno anasema igawaje mwanzo wetu ulikuwa ni mdogo sana and thought our beginning, beginning was small the end of it itakuwa kubwa sana itakuwa ya kupanuka igawaji mwanzo wetu ulikuwa ni mdogo mwisho wake utakuwa ni kupanuka sana na kwa hivyo usidharau huo mlango mdogo ambao Mungu amefungua because watu wengi huwa wanadharau pia vile vile kuna watu huwa wanadharau wanasema ya kwamba sasa kama ni mama wamama watatusaidia kitu gani kuna wakati mmoja kwenye kile kitabu cha judges hii nitaweza kukupatia wazi na, na sura yake ya tisa na msari wake wa, wa, wa hamsini na tatu. Biblia inasema kuna wakati wana wa Israeli walikuwa wamekaliwa kimabavu na the, 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 the Philistines na wakapigwa sana na mfalme alikuwa mwenye nguvu sana alikuwa na itwa Abimelech. Abimelech alikibiza wanaume wazito wakakibizwa mpaka wakaingia katika nyumba moja ilikuwa imejengwa ya mviringo wakajifisha kule Dan na wakati wakalijifisha katika ile tawa the bible says mfalme abimelech akakuja akasema ya kwamba nitaichoma na nitawachomea wote ndani na alikuwa na ama bela wake alikuwa amesimama pale yani yeye hakujua kuna mama mama mmoja alikuwa ako kule juu ya ya, ya tawa Aka, akawa ameshika jiwe moja la kusiaga na biblia inasema yule mama kwa guvu zake akalusha lile jiwe likamgonga kichwa mfalme abimeleki na biblia inasema likapasua skala yake ikapasuka kichwa kikapasuka wakati aliangalia juu akaona ni mama na maana alikuwa amedharau wa mama akaambia abim akaambia mabeara wake shukua upanga wangu unidunge nikufe isisemekane shujaa kama mimi ameuawa na mama lakini vile hakujua ni ya kwamba olede ni mama hata imeandikwa kwa vitabu ni mama aligonga yeye kichwa na jiwe akakufa alidharau walidharau ule mama lakini ule mama dialileta ushindi au yule mama hagehesabiwa mahali hata katika Israeli 
neno la Bwana inasema hata katika Israeli wagehesabiwa wa Yahudi wanaume lakini wa mama juu ya kudharauliwa walikuwa wanaachwa hawakuwa wanahesabiwa lakini yule mama die aligonga kichwa cha yule mfalme Abimeleki ni waulize wale ambao ni wasomi wa Bible ni nani aliyemleta shini si sela yule mfalme ambaye alikuwa amepiga Israeli kwa wakati mrefu Biblia inasema wakati alikibizwa aliingia katika nyumba moja ya mama ambaye anaitwa Jaeli akaingia mahali pale akapewa maziwa akalala na yule mama Biblia inasema ya kwamba akionekana tu kama ni mama tu mtu wa hae ambaye anaweza akadharauliwa lakini wakati aliona huyu mfalme ambaye pia alikuwa amekalia the Israelites Biblia inasema wakati alimuona amelala aliendea nyundo na msumali akamgongea kwa kishwa mpaka akakufa na ikasemekana shujaa ameagushwa na mama nigeraka niwaambie hata watu ambao tunao wadharau labda dio wako na funguo ya kutufungulia maisha yetu many people in times of jesus christ they never accepted jesus christ wali mudharau in fact they despised him na bila inasema even many kwa ile kijiji alichokizaliwa hakuteda miujiza mingi mahali pale why kwa sababu they despised him wengine walisema ya kwamba huyu tunamjua kijana wa seremana son of a carpenter we know him they despised him lakini ukiangalia kuingine kapenaumu neini na kina na, na kina bethane alivuvua kwa sababu those people respected and honored him lakini wengine walio mudharau hawakufuguliwa hawakuweza kubarikiwa family zao zilibaki na magonjwa family zao zilibaki kusumbuka na shida zao kwa sababu walimudharau mwana wa Mungu wakasema is just a son of a carpenter hata mahali alishukua ashuo shanabi Isaiah akaanza kusoma akasema this day this word has come to pass ya kwamba mkono wa Mungu uko juu yangu na roho yake iko juu yangu nikaweza kutangazia mateka wakawe huru na akaongea mambo tofauti ambayo yameandikwa mahali pale watu waliulizana ya kwamba and who is this anajiita mwana wa Mungu na tunajua alizaliwa na a carpenter alizaliwa na seremara walimudharau hawakumheshimu na ripoza ikatokea kwamba nabii hana heshima kwao lakini ningetaka nikwambie watu wengi tunao wadharau ndio Mungu amepatia funguo za maisha na ujue pia watu wengi ambao waliodharauliwa Mungu alienda upande wao tuko na familia ya Jacob Jacob had a good family na alikuwa na wake wawili mmoja aliitwa Lea mwingine aliitwa Lecho Biblia inasema alidharau sana Lea kwa sababu Lea alikuwa na macho ambayo haikuwa na nguvu wanasema yake ilikuwa kengeza na kwa hivyo walimdharau na hakupendwa hata kidogo lesho walipendwa Mungu alikuja upande wa Lea ndipo Lea alipata watoto lakini lecho akakosa watoto na hata unajua vizuri ya kwamba kukufa kwake lesho alikufa akipata mtoto Benjamin kwa sababu ya nini kwa sababu pale kuna madharau remember the bible says that god is not a respecter of any person na Mungu hagari yake ubo wale ambao labda kuna watu tulio wadharau kwa sababu ya maubile yao maybe vile ambavyo wameubwa labda wale ndio walikuwa na fuguo wale ndio walikuwa wafugue mlango ama wale ndio walikuwa our door to greatness because our door to greatness inaweza ikawa ni mtu ambaye amedharauliwa sana Neno la Bwana inasema in the book of 1 Samuel I want you to, to listen to this word. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. Biblia inaongea wakati Daudi alienda kupigana vita na wakati alirudi na akiwa na wanajeshi a, 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 mia sita akakuta ya kwamba kijiji shake zikla kimeweza kuchomwa na vitu zake zote zimeshukuliwa vitu zao zote zimeshukuliwa na wake wake wawili mmoja akiwa Ainomu na mwingine akiwa Abigaeli wote wameshukuliwa Biblia inasema ya kwamba akaangalia and the bible says because he was so much discouraged he resorted into seeking and inquiring from the lord and god almighty listened to him and, and, and he replied and he told him David wake up and pursue because you will overtake and recover everything And the Bible says very clearly wakati aliambiwa hivyo maana amejipa nguvu aliambia watu wa mkeni Mungu ameniambia tufuate kwa sababu tutafikia na tutaweza kurudisha kurejesha kila kitu ambacho kimeenda na Biblia inasema wakati walipokuwa wakitembea katika vale moja wakakuta kijana ambaye hana nguvu mwili wake umedhoofika mgonjwa na ako karibu na kifo 
na Biblia inasema wana umewala wengine wote walikuwa wanasema nini uwa yeye huyu mtumjui muue Daudi akasema msimuue msidharau yeye mpatieni mkate na maji kijana akapatiwa mkate alafu akapatiwa maji akakunywa akapata guvu Daudi akamketisha chini akamuuliza ya kwamba wewe niambie wewe ni nani akasema mimi ni mumisiri lakini nilishukuriwa mateka mimi ni mfanyi kazi kule kwa Ameleki na sisi ndio tulikuwa tumekuja Ziklag tumeshukua utajiri wenu wote tumeshukua kila kitu mpaka wakezeni na tumechoma na sasa kwa sababu umenipatia nini umenipatia mkate na umenipatia maji niko na guvu mimi nitakuonyesha mahali vitu zenu zote ziko huo ndio alikuwa mlango that was the door that was the door that young man ambaye alikuwa ameachwa hapo akiwa mgonjwa akakaa 3 days without food and water agatharauliwa wengine walisema uwawe Daudi akasema asiwawe that was the door huo ndio ulikuwa mlango huo ndio ulikuwa mlango wa Daudi Daudi akaenda akapigana vita akarudisha wake zake na, na, na kila aina yote ya utajiri ambao ulikuwa umeshukuriwa labda yule mtu uliye dharau ndiye alikuwa na fugu yako labda yule mtu ambaye you ignored you ignored ndiye alikuwa wa msaada wako mkubwa listen to this very carefully kuna watu ambao wako shini sana lakini dio wako na fuguo ya kufugua milango yetu. Washa hata fuguo, labda dio milango yetu sisi wenyewe kupata jia katika haya maisha. Usidharau mtu ati ukimwangalia kwa sababu ila amesoma ama haje soma, ama yuko na mali ama hana mali. Kumbuka dunia hii ukijaribu kusawazisha watu kwa sababu wako na mali ama hawana mali. The, 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 the Bible says in the book of the Bible says in the book of Job Dunia hii tulikuja bila kitu. Tutaondoka bila kitu. Hata tukidharau wale hawana, hakuna yule yuko naye atazikwa naye. Ataenda bila. Na kwa hivyo nikitaka kuambia, wacha tuwe kama Mungu. He is, the Bible says he is not a respecter of any man. Biblia inasema in the book of Job, if you read in the book of Job chapter 36 and verses 5, the Bible says that the Lord Almighty is so powerful. He is so powerful. He is mighty and lives very high ako juu sana but the bible says he despises not a man lakini yeye hamdhalau mwanadamu ako na nguvu sana na uwezo mkubwa sana lakini ako juu sana na pia hamdhalau mwanadamu kama mugu hadharau mwanadamu usidharau wanadamu labda mwanadamu huyo ambaye tunaona hana jia die ako na funguo yetu ako na funguo there is one thing there is one there is one one one, one chapter in the book of second kings that gives me a lot of power and energy wakati ninapoisoma na ninafikiria juu ya mtu ambaye anaweza akawa fuguo there is this man by the name uh, 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 naman the bible says that naman was a respectable man because kwa jia yake alikuwa ameletea seria ama suriata alikuwa ameletea alikuwa ameletea ushindi mkubwa sana lakini biblia inasema ya kwamba he had one challenge alikuwa mgonjwa leprosy alikuwa na ukoma alikuwa na nuka vibaya sana lakini neno la Bwana inasema kwa nyumba yake kuliajiriwa house help yule mjakazi mtu wakusaidia kwa nyumba huyo ndiye aliambia huyo ndiye aliambia mke wa Naman laiti mkubwa wangu wagejua kule nilishukuliwa mateka kule Samaria kuna nabii ambaye akimwendea ule ugonjwa ambao hauna kiga ukoma anaweza akaondolewa shida yake acha kunuka anaonekana wa heshima lakini ananuka anaonekana mzuri sana anaonekana ni ameleta ameleta ushidi mkubwa sana ameleta heshima kubwa huku Syria kwa sababu ni mtu mkubwa na ameheshimika sana lakini ananuka ako na ugonjwa suruhisho yake iko kule Samaria na saa hiyo ni mfanyikazi mjakazi mfanyikazi ameajiriwa kwa nyumba house help ndiye alifanyika kuwa msaada mkubwa na Biblia inasema mama akamwendea Naman akamweleza Naman Naman akachukua barua za kila aina akaenda Samaria igawaje hakuobewa vile alifikiria alipatiwa formula ya kwamba akienda Jordan ajiweke seven times ya kwamba ugonjwa utaondoka na wakati alienda Biblia inasema ya kwamba his skin was restored back like the, the, the skin of a baby yani ugonjwa ukaondoka na akawa mwili wake ni kama wa mtoto gozi yake ni kama ya mtoto lakini fuguo zilikuwa na nani mjakazi mtu wako shini sana 
Labda yule ambaye tuli despise na tukafukuza kama ubwa. Labda huyo ni yeye alikuwa anafugua. Our key to greatness most of the times Mungu ameyapatiana kwa watu ambao tunaweza tukawadharau. You are key to greatness na kueleza siku ilipeanwa na imepeanwa kwa watu ilipeanwa na Mungu na imepeanwa kwa watu ambao tunaweza tukawadharau tukaona ya kwamba hawafai but this day in the name of Jesus i pray that the lord almighty god will open your eyes of understanding and understand these scriptures so that from today utaweza kuheshimu watu wote utajua huyu kuna uwezekano awe die yuko na jia ya maisha yangu kuna uwezekano huyu awe na jia ya maisha yangu let me tell, let me give you a testimony it will help you many times many years ago or several years ago nilikuja kuhubiri hapa Kiambu Nikatafuta mahali pa kuweka ku, kuanza huduma nikakosa. And uh, when I prayed one day I remember I prayed the whole night. And asubuhi yake tukakutana na mtu mmoja. Tulijuana zamani sana. This man was not born again. Huyu mtu wako ameokoka. Alafu nikamwambia maono. I, I I mean even to this day ask myself kile ilifanyika niambie mtu ambaye haji okoka mzee, niambie mzee maono yangu. Nikamwambia yote nikamwambia nimekuja hapa kutafuta kufungua kanisa na na sina mahali akaniambia huyo hapo hapo akaniambia ya kwamba he used to call me Michael akaniambia Michael nitakusaidia nitakusaidia niko na nyuba niko na nyuba ambao unaweza ukaanza kanisa hata niko na viti za kukalia forms akaniambia nitakupatia hizo bure lakini nyuba nitakulipisha pesa kidogo akaniuliza ya kwamba uko busy sana niende nikakuonyeshe na tukaenda mahali pale maana si kuwa busy tukaenda mahali pale tukaiona and that is how this ministry and that is how hili kanisa lilianzia nilionyeshwa mahali na mtu ambaye haitanishwi na mugu mtu ambaye hajiokoka alinipatia mahali kama ni game wigno maana ningesema huyu atanisaidia nini hajiokoka kama ni game wigno sigepata mahali i'm here to encourage you do not despise other people they may be calling your 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 key to greatness maybe they are not the they, they, they may not they, they may be a, they may not have the key to your greatness they are the little dot to your greatness na wale labda ndio umedhalau mungu akuzamee kwa sababu mungu ni second chance akupatia second chance kama kuna mtu ulidharau katupa ije may god give you a second chance maana unaweza ukabaki mahali pamoja miaka yote Miaka nenda ludi kwa sababu watu wako ili wakuinue wamewekwa ili ukanyange ukaende juu ukisha wadharao unaweza ukakuta you have stagnated for a long time kwa sababu kuna watu Mungu aliweka mahali pale na Mungu akubariki sana may god bless you so much wakati unataka niombe watu wale wote ambao ni wagonjwa if you are sick najua kuna watu wanashangaa wengi wanauliza ya kwamba ah yeah maybe that is why you have been in one place for 10 years kwa sababu kuna mtu ulirusha ije na ndiye alikuwa the dot your greatness ya yeah, ulimudharau mali uliko labda ungekuwa ume uko juu sana lakini yule alikuwa na fungo yako ulimweka nje ulisema hazai maana kwa miaka mitatu hakupata watoto ugegojea mwaka mwingine moja i want to pray for all of us and more especially those that are sick Nataka niombe kwa sababu Mungu amenitoa tu, amenipatia ule uwezo. Ni kuombea kwamba Mungu atakuponya. Katika jina la Yesu Kristu, ninaomba wote mnasubuka na ugonjwa wa kisukari. Naomba wale wote mnamwekojeka magonjwa ya saratani. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo, baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo, ninaomba kwa sababu ya watu wote ambao wamenitazama na wamegojeka ugonjwa wa diabetes, ugonjwa wa kisukari. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninawaombea wakapone. Ninatuma neno lako la uponyaji likaponye kansa. Hata ile imeenda stage 4 in the name of Jesus. Salatani ya damu, salatani ya mifupa katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Kila aina yote ya ufimbe ikaondoke katika ule mwili.
katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninaomba kwa sababu ya kila aina yote ya allergy in the mighty name of Jesus i rebuke it now iodoke kwa yule mwili katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninaombea homa za kila aina ninaomba pneumonia ikaondoke kwa ile mapavu katika jina la Yesu covid 19 i rebuke you you have no power in the name of Jesus Christ and i declare healing in the name of Jesus Christ Mungu na Yesu Kristo wewe ambaye utuponya ninaomba ukapone wale wote ambao wamesubuka na fibroids wale wamesubuka miaka nyingi wakiwa tasa hawazai watoto i declare in the name of Jesus Christ katika mwaka huu wa uzito uwapatie jabo jipya katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninaomba arthritis has no power in the name of Jesus asthma has no power i rebuke goita in the name of Jesus Christ ninaomba bwana ukaponye depression in the name of Jesus magonjwa yote inaletwa na wachawi na waganga ikaondoke katika jina la Yesu Kristo and Lord Almighty God I declare Lord Almighty God that you are healing all sicknesses and all kinds and all sorts of illness in the name of Jesus Christ wale ambao waligojeka stroke na wengine wakawa paralyzed kwa sababu ya ma accident I declare nyama zenu zipate nguvu ninasema tena ya kwamba mifupa yenu ikashikana na mifupa katika jina la Yesu Kristo na ninaomba uwezo wa Mungu ukawe juu ya maisha yenu may God restore you back to perfect health in the name of Jesus Christ may God heal your wounds in the name of Jesus Christ wale wamegojeka vinonda vya ulcers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that the Lord Almighty God heals you today in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you Lord Almighty God we honor you in Jesus name we pray and believe amen god bless you so much wale wote hawaji okoka sema nyuma yangu bwana yesu niko mbele zako nisamehe dhambi na makosa kuanzia siku ya leo adika majina yangu kwenye kitabu cha uzima na mungu kanibariki katika jina la yesu nimeokoka amen may god bless you so much naombea wale wote ambao wanajitolea sadaka zao kuna nabali nimekuwekea pale unaweza ukajitolea sadaka uh, to support this program uh, kama ugetaka kujitolea sadaka zako ukaweze kulipia program hii mungu akubariki sana ya kwamba pesa zako hazitapotea kwa makesi kotini pesa zako hazitapotea kwa magonjwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo Mungu akabariki kazi ya mikono yako Mungu akabariki biashara yako Baba katika jina la Yesu wewe ni wewe huinua watu neno lako linasema you give us the ability and power dear lord almighty god uh, uh, to have wealth i pray in the name of jesus kuanzia siku hii ya leo ya kwamba watu wako wanapojitolea ukawabariki kwa mikono yao bwana ukaweke uwezo wa kuwa na utajiri deuteronomy chapter 8 and verses 18 be the your portion in the name of jesus christ utukuzwe bwana na uheshimiwe daima katika jina la yesu tume omba na kuamini. God bless you so much. Unaweza ukaniandikia ujumbe mfupi kama una jambo lolote ugetaka tuombe pamoja nawe na Mungu ataweza kukubariki. May God bless you mara tena kwa majina yangu ni mshungaji Michael Wanderi kutoka kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship hapa mjini Kiambu. Nikisema Mungu awe pamoja nawe na wema wa Bwana ukaperekane pamoja nawe. Ukabarikiwe ukiondoka na ukirudi. Shalom, shalom. Everybody pray my asore tai raka makataya leka makose katai le masori na malakotaya le kataya rabaganda we declare colona will not colonize kenya in the name of jesus christ because kenya is a godly nation is a righteous nation in the name of the lord the bible says blessed is the nation who the lord god is the leader jehovah is our leader jehovah is our leader hata kama mudi umekatwa kuna tumaini we want to declare there is hope for kenya there is hope for business people there is hope for our schools kenya will go back to normal ah everybody pray everybody pray everybody pray we declare kenya will go back to normal kenya will go back to normal hey Sha Makata babona zina